Are there any other characteristics of a shoe besides the big three you've mentioned that you, you, I mean, you have pretty strong feelings about all of them, but in descending order, right? Of the three, we talked about it. Your strongest feelings were at the outset. Yeah. I mean, you want to put the foot in its most functional position. I think that's the rule. And that means allowing the foot to splay and trying to keep it on a level ground. And then you can play around with, you know, based on activity with the amount of stack height. But they have shoes now, right, where they have the wide toe box, but they'll still give you like a three to five millimeter heel to toe drop. The Topo Athletic, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ultra actually now has a four millimeter heel to toe drop. So I'll kind of transition them. If I know this person has poor ankle mobility and poor foot strength, I'm going to say, listen, we're going to get you in a wide toe box. I'm going to drop you down from your 10 into, say, a five, right? Slowly bring them there. They're going to be like, oh, this feels great because they always do. And then we start working on their strength and then we can continue to drop them down into a more functional shoe. But, you know, you think about um, hockey players, rock climbers, um, where shoes are just what they are. You can't, you know, I'm not asking everybody to run around barefoot all the time. It's not, it's not reality. So when, if you do want to run in a super shoe or you do play hockey a lot, don't panic. It's just do the stuff. Do the work outside. Do the work outside. Get a pair of minimal shoes, grab some toe spacers and walk around for 30 minutes a day. Keep it simple. Is a good rule of thumb that a shoe is a, is a wide enough toe box if you can wear the toe spacers in the shoes? Yes. And if and, you, and you, you, you're pretty much in, I've never seen you not wearing toe spacers. Do, do you sleep them. in them? <laughs> I don't sleep in you them. You don't. Okay. Good to know. But I would do wear them all the time. I wear them when I run as well. Okay. You know, I have that his, their history of bunions, the Halix valgus. So my foot has gotten so much stronger over the last 10 years. Um, my, you know, prognosis was they wanted to surgically correct my, um, bunions. And I was like, that's not happening. I'm way too active um, for my mental health, for the, for that, for me, that to sideline me. Cause I see it all the time. It's a, it's a high rate of failed surgery. Most foot surgeries are. Hmm. So, you know, I wear them all the time. I wear them in all of my shoes and, um, it's helped me immensely and it has helped so many of my patients. Um, the brand that you wear is the brand I have as well. It's uh, what's it called? So the, the toe spacers yeah. that we have is from a company, Podiatry Essentials. Okay. They're clear and they yeah. fit in between. Yeah. Show us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they fit in. So, so basically your the outer part of the foot is not experiencing the spacing. Yeah. So yeah. if I were to put it here. Yeah. So it's easier to fit into a shoe basically. Yeah. Now I notice you have a little rigid thing in there. I don't. What's that thing for? So I put, um, I have cork that I will put into, um, the toe spacer in between the first and second toe, especially if that person tends to have, if they have a bunion, right? I want to have a little more resistance there. Okay. Um, But I mean, most four foot diagnoses, I mean, we didn't even talk about neuromas, which is so common. And it literally feels like your foot is broken when you're pushing off of a foot that has a neuroma in it. Mm. And that toe splay, it gives the foot room. You have all these nerves that run in between the toes. They don't want to be squished together. So your recommendation would be for a person who's never worn a toe spacer. And again, in the show notes, we will link to all of Mm -hmm. these devices. Your recommendation would be to start how limited, how small, how many minutes a day? I will tell a patient, here's your toe spacers. You're going to walk around barefoot in your house for five minutes. That's it. That's it. On their weaker foot, because they don't have toe splay, the toes will like rub against the toe spacer and you can get like a callus or a corn and that can be very painful and they'll want to rip this thing off. It happened to me. It took me probably six months on my weaker foot before I could wear these all day long. And now it's like, I mean, I can like, it takes me 
0.05 seconds to put these on because I just spread my toes and they slide right on. In the beginning, when you're trying to put these on, I'll see people like trying to like wrench their toes apart because they simply can't spread their toes. It's wild. Mm -hmm. So they start with five minutes a day. Then they just slowly increase their time. Then they get a shoe where they can wear the toe spacer in the shoe. And think of it as like um, just doing an exercise for your foot. I mean, yeah. They looked at, Sarah Ridge did a study looking at strength of the foot. And so what she looked at, there was a control group, a group that just did foot strengthening exercises and just wore functional footwear. And they looked at four different muscles. So flexor digitorum brevis, the one we talked about that supports the plantar fascia, abductor halysis, the one that straightens the big toe, quadratus plantae we didn't talk about that guy but he helps straighten the fourth and fifth toes okay and um what was the other one i think it was flexor halysis brevis so the one that bends the big toe at the end of the study the foot strengthening um, group and the functional footwear group were almost neck and neck really Yes. The functional foot people didn't actually do exercise. They just wore just corrective wore the shoes. shoes. And the only muscle that didn't get stronger was flexor halysis brevis. There was one muscle that didn't quite get there. Does that surprise you? I mean, not really. I mean, when you have your foot in I mean, a that's great news for the average person who doesn't want to do the work. Because like you're just saying, basically, all I have to do is change my shoes and things will get significantly better. Imagine if you did both, though. Well, of course. Right? So, but, I mean, you think about meeting a patient where they are. Yeah. Now, by the time people get into my office, I have some go-getters. Like, they want to, they're like, I've had foot pain. I want to get this job done. Yeah. So, they're going to go shoe, we're going to go toe spacers, and we're going to go foot strength. Yeah. Now, I have other people that I know where I'm like, you're probably- I'll start with one. You got to start with one factor. And if I had to do that, where am I going to get the most bang for my buck? Put them in the right, put them in the right shoe.